In this video, we're going to work through writing formulae for different compounds. We'll start with two element compounds, which end in IDE, and then we'll move on to three element compounds, which end in IT or eight. So the first compound that we're looking at is potassium chloride. Now, the first step whenever you're looking at doing formulae is to look in your data book and find the symbols for the two elements that you have. So potassium is K and chlorine is Cl. <coughs> Using this method, underneath the two elements you write down their valency. So the valency for potassium is 1 as it is in group 1 and it has one outer electron. So you write the number 1 underneath the potassium and for chlorine the valency is also 1. It's in group 7, it needs one extra electron to have a full outer shell and therefore it can form one bond. Once you've written the valencies underneath, you swap them over. So the one goes over here and this one goes over here. And that will give you your final answer of KCL. Remembering that we don't write in numbers if they're number one. Our next example, we have potassium oxide. So again, we have K with a valency of one. And this time we have oxygen, which is an O. It's in group six. It has a valency of 2, as it needs 2 electrons to fill up its outer shell. So you write a number 2 underneath the oxygen. When we swap them over, we find that the 2 now sits with our potassium. So we have K2O, again missing the 1 for the oxygen. Magnesium fluoride, you'll find magnesium in group 2. It has two outer electrons, which it can lose when it forms a compound. And fluorine is in group 7, where chlorine is, so it has a valency of 1. Simply swap over the valencies, and you'll find you have MgF2. Next example we've got here, aluminium oxide. Aluminium in group 3, it's got 3 outer electrons. Oxygen, as we've had before, it's in group 6, a valency of 2. Swap over the two valencies to give us our final answer of Al2O3. <coughs> the next two examples are examples of transition metals. So if you're looking in your data book, you'll find that you have all of the metals within their groups with their group numbers at the top. However, the transition metals don't have group numbers and therefore it's more tricky for you to work out the valency. To help you, the valency will be put in brackets after the metal's name and given as Roman numerals. So we have here Roman numeral for two and this is the valency for the iron. So iron is the symbol Fe. We've seen here it's got a valency 2, so you put the 2 underneath. Oxygen, we've seen before, and we swap them over. This time, however, we would end up with Fe2O2. When a situation like this arises, you need to cancel the numbers until you get to the most simple formula. So you'll have FeO as both numbers divide by 2. We have another example here using the Roman numerals. So we've got iron, and after iron in brackets, we have the Roman numeral for three. That is the iron's valency. So we have Fe, three, O, valency of two. Swap them over, and this time we get Fe, two, O, three. Moving on now to have a look at three element compounds and the only exception to our ID and eight rule. So hydroxide actually contains two elements, which means that this compound in total has three elements. You'll find the group ions in a table on your, in your data book and at the top of each column it has the what will be the valency given as the charge. So hydroxide is in the 1 minus column, which means that it has a valency of 1. So you'll find Ca in group 2. 
of fine hydroxide in the table is given as OH and it has a valency of 1. Now you must remember that OH is a group together so must be treated as one entity. We swap over our valencies so we get CA and this time we need to remember that OH as it's a whole thing together it needs to go in brackets. If we didn't put the brackets in, this would say CaOH2, which would imply you have one oxygen and two hydrogens, when in fact we actually have two oxygens and two hydrogens in the compound. Our final example is looking at aluminium sulfate. So aluminium is in group 3. Sulfate you will find in the 2 minus column in your table. It's SO4 and it has a valency of 2. We can swap these over and again we need to remember to put in brackets around our group ion. If you were to miss out the brackets you would have SO43 which is not going to happen. So remember to put in the brackets to show that that is a full thing together.